usually have the anthem. Anthem, Raji. Do we have? We had it. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Warm welcome to each one of you for the third day of our volunteer training program. Today, we'll be enlightened about the psychosocial support, its importance, components of psychosocial care, understanding eco maps, and also about compassionate community care and neighborhood networking. Our faculty of this evening is Mr. Sharad Krishna, Social Officer of Pallium India. He plays a vital role in social engagement department of Pallium India, looks into the patient care and rehab support through active interventions. Completed his MSW from MG University, worked for National Institute for Language Acquisition, worked for the welfare of children and their family in tribal areas of Kerala. Welcome, Mr. Sharath, and over to you now. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, my name is Sharath, and uh, I'll be the faculty for today. And I'll be, means we'll be having a small discussion or kind of a but we can say it's not a session actually. Um, it, it mainly focuses on the care to the patients. So I don't want to just mention it as a um, proper session. Uh, I just want to tell you like uh, what my experience is like, um, what I came across uh, all these aspects like psychosocial aspects during this one year with Palim India. And my experience will be shared with this uh, discussion. Also, so it will be. Uh, I think it will be very helpful for you to understand what is exactly psychosocial aspects in the session of palliative care. Okay, so uh, you can just uh, give me if any doubts are there. You can just ask me right away in the chat box, uh, and uh, we'll be having a discussion session at the last of the session. Okay, so if you have any doubts, just let me know. No problem. We can just clarify it and uh, we'll just move on to the next topics, okay? So um, I think you all are safe in our uh, places. And so we'll just start the discussion here. So you all know that uh, from the previous session, like uh, what is palliative care by uh, Dr. Raj? Uh, so uh, palliative care is not a simple thing. It's a wide area of, uh, because um, we don't know uh, whatever happens to us in uh, day-to-day life and uh, whatever happens to our, uh, the person we see in our day-to-day life in the next uh, day also. Uh, because uh, life is an ongoing process. So whatever happens in our, in our life is uh, related with so many persons and so many, uh, so many things are surrounded by us also. So palliative care is something that uh, gives us an idea about um, how to care or uh, how to give care to others and how to nurture them. When they are in a suffering, we have to be a person uh, who can help them to uh, just um, avoid all these uh, problems in their life and to rectify um, the problems and also um, by helping them is the main function of a human being. So once again, welcome to the session and um, psychosocial aspects of care. Uh, the first will be uh, a small description by uh, World Health Organization. Um, can I just see the next slide? Okay, thank you. So uh, here's the small example, like small wording about what is palliative care and everything by WHO. Uh, these are just uh, simple things, like uh, some words, some phrases. But what we have to do is just imbibe it in ourselves and we have to just, um, um, just practice it in the society. So that is where palliative care exactly uh, performs. So palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their families, those who are facing problems associated with life-threatening illnesses through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification and impeccable assessment 
and treatment of pain and other problems like physical, psychosocial, and spiritual. So this statement is very short, but it has a lot of meaning. With this uh, discussion, we'll be coming across all these aspects, like uh, physical aspects, psychosocial aspects, and spiritual aspect, aspect too. Like the pain that is uh, found in a person, uh, those who are having a uh, life threatening illness, is not only uh, uh, considered as a small thing, because uh, the physical pain will be uh, surrounded by so much things like uh, psychosocial problems are there, they'll be having spiritual concerns, they'll be having physical problems that should be there because they'll be having so much pain in their uh, body uh, throughout. So these whole things are related. So how an assessment uh, leads to a proper um, problem solution and uh, how we can prevent uh, and relieve uh, the suffering uh, persons. So these all are related. Uh, just for just um, gathering up the all things. Like in the next slide, we can see that. Uh, Vaishnav, mm -hmm. next slide. <laughs> so uh, the first thing we are uh, we want to discuss about it total pain. Uh, the physical pain reported by a patient is compounded by his or her current life circumstances. So we can just uh, go through like uh, a small example. Like um, you can relate any of your colleague or any of your patient. I don't want to mention him as a patient, him or her as a patient, because they they also want that dignity in uh, their day to day life. So uh, if you come across any kind of situations uh, in a person. Uh, who are who is having uh, life threatening illnesses like uh, cancer um, or by any means of uh, any paraplegic situations like uh, those who have uh, gone across uh, some accidents or something uh, or they will be having any kidney diseases. So these whole things are uh, life threatening illnesses. So what comes is the physical pain that comes to their life at that moment that current life but that is related with their current circumstances is uh, totally, we call it as total pain. Uh, I think you got an idea about total pain. So we will uh, use this term, total pain in the whole session. Okay, so we will get a more about, idea about uh, total pain after the conclusion of the discussion. Here comes the biggest part, like social diagnosis is the first uh, part in um, finding out the, what is the pain and how it affects his social well-being and all. Uh, these whole terms are comes under social diagnosis. Uh, this is where an understanding of psychological, biological, social, and environmental factors operating on the persons in his situation. So social diagnosis is very important because the person is having an illness. Consider me as a person who's having a, a severe illness. I'll be having psychological issues, like what will be the future and how I'm going to just overcome it. That will be my psychological issues. The second will be biological, like my health conditions, my problems and all. Then will be there will be social problems, like how I'm going to uh, talk with other persons, how I'm going to uh, meet with them, uh, how I am going to interact with them. So there will be a lot of problems surrounded uh, around me. So then there will be environmental factors. Um, before the illness, I'll be able to uh, do whatever I want, but after the illness, I'll be restricted to one area. So these whole factors affects my day-to-day -day life. So my situation will differ after, after illness comes into my life. So through a social diagnosis, it will be very helpful for us to find out what is the exact problem and how we can rectify it. So these are the two terms, 
which comes in uh, at the first moment. Okay, so we will uh, talk more about total pain in the coming uh, coming stances. Okay, uh, Vaishnu, next slide. Okay. So illness related suffering is much more than just physical distress. So what I told you in the previous one is exactly this. My total pain. Uh, I want you to consider me as a patient and uh, this is for an example. And my total pain will be um, calculated by my physical problems, psychological, socioeconomic and spiritual. Uh, I have mentioned in the previous one like environmental and social problems. So these, uh, these things comes under socioeconomic problems. Uh, we all know that uh, in socioeconomic problems, uh, when a disease comes into your life, you'll be um, like it's curable and non-curable diseases are there. So if it is not curable, you have to pay a lot uh, in the form of uh, treatments for medications and everything. So it will affect your social and economical factors too. So this is where uh, comes socioeconomic uh, areas. Okay. So next slide. So why is psychosocial care important in palliative care? You can think of it. Like why is psychosocial care important in palliative care? Because we can just give him what he needs. Like uh, if you just um, come across a patient or a person, uh, he's having only pain. So you can give him the medicines, medications that he needs. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that we can do. But we don't know about the exact pain, what is he having? Let me tell you an example. Uh, when we were in a home care, we found a play, uh, we found a person, I don't want to mention him, his name. Um, he's having severe pains. Severe pains in the name, uh, like he's having a uh, like threatening illness and he's having some problems. Uh, like uh, he's having only four or five months of life. That was a doctor suggested. But he's having pain. What kind of pain? We don't know. Like, is telling them physical pain is there, but we are giving them medications, everything. But he's still saying like, uh, my pain is not, um, it's not fully gone. It still persists. So at that moment, uh, we just went to their home. We met with him. Met with him. We had a session. We had a talk, and everything. After that, we found that his physical pain is not only the pain. Is having two children who is three and five years old only. So he is having pain related to their future. Like what will happen to them after uh, my death or if uh, whatever happens to me after that, what if, what happens? So, so that was the exact concern of that, pain, of that person. So physical pain. Uh, not only means that um, he's having pain very physically, it also means that he's having pain in another areas like psychologically or socioeconomically or spiritually too. So this is where a psychosocial care is important in palliative care. Living with a life-limiting illness or life-threatening illness or the awareness of approaching death causes unique stressors and challenges. Because we will always think about not only our future, We'll always think about our family too and the surround and whoever are surrounded by us, we will always con consider them. And also we we have some duties in our life. So we'll always just think about that very often. So this becomes stresses, this makes stresses and challenges in your life. And a serious illness disturb, disrupts individuals' thoughts and feelings relationships, social and spiritual supports, financial stability and spirituality too. So this is where a psychosocial care is important in palliative care. Okay, you, um, uh, you all got an idea? Okay, uh, 
So next slide. The first basic thing in psychosocial care is assessment. So assessment is something that is to be done or uh, it is a, uh, it's a prolonging thing. Like uh, the at the very first meeting, we don't know anything about that person. So it is an exploration process of gathering information. Through a proper assessment only, we can uh, come to a point where what is the exact problem is. Without a proper assessment, we, can, we can't do anything. The selection of goals and innovations depends largely on what is being assessed. In Palim India, here, uh, the starting procedure is the registration. After the registration, the basic details are collected. A social officer uh, or a nurse collects other information. Like uh, if you ask me uh, what is the exact details we collect, it's like uh, what is his exact family condition, uh, what is his family's um, family tree, uh, what is his support system, what are his uh, problems right now, if it is economic problems or any social problems are there or anything related to psychological problems or any other worries are there. So these whole things are assessed with a proper assessment, with the help of a social officer or with the help of a nurse or a doctor. So assessment is an important factor. It's a basic thing in a care, okay? So next. Next slide. So the aim of assessment is to identify problem areas which results from illness and may influence the well-being of patients and their families. And it also involves collecting of information. As I uh, told you earlier, the collecting of information at the very first stage and identifying and honoring strengths, resources, and needs. But it is a basic thing and it is continuing process too. Because at the first time, the person will not be able to convey all the things with you. You have to make a, a rapport with them. And this will take more time. Then only you can know more about that person and uh, what is his exact needs are and what is uh, his exact problems are. So these whole things can be found with uh, proper assessment and it's a continuing process. Okay. Uh, anyone has any doubts? If you have any doubts, just ask me right away. Okay. So next slide. Okay. So as I said earlier, assessment is an ongoing process as the psychosocial needs of patients and family or caregivers often change over the course of things. And the uh, two bullet points that are very important, purposeful observations and purposeful conversations. We can start a conversation by just saying hi or uh, hello, and we just continue it. But those conversations needs a purpose. We have to be very free with them we have to be very genuine with them, but we have to observe them very purposefully because those purposeful observations leads to a purposeful solution of their problems. So purposeful observations and purposeful conversation are must, okay? So these are the two things you have to remember when you conduct an assessment. Next slide. So next one is source of information, how we collect information. In Palim India, we collect information with the help of OPs. Uh, we collect information uh, with the help of OMCAS and uh, with the help of um, any home it's true. So the source of information is collected by, means collected from 
a patient or caregiver uh, who who comes to the uh, OP or uh, at Pan in India or gives the information to us. There's also collateral sources like friends, relative neighbors, etc. But at the first time, uh, when you just register a patient or a person, uh, you don't know anything like the exact details about them. This is where home visits are making a crucial part of, for interventions. As you can see those two pictures, these two pictures are not a random pictures. These were shot uh, when we visited a person's home. So the, in the first picture, you can see it's a, a rock paved path. It's very slippery. And the patient was a paraplegic patient. And uh, the second picture you can see, it is uh, not a well-built house. So here, his current circumstances, like his socioeconomic circumstances are very poor. And he has not any accessibility to uh, uh, when he want to go to hospital visit, or even he if he wants to just uh, go in his wheelchair or something, there is no access to it. So with the help of a home visits only, we can know about uh, these kind of things. So this is where. Um, Home visits are very important. The source of information can be collected by these three sources. Uh, we have to know about the collateral sources also because we can collect the information from his friends, his relatives, and his neighbors too, because they all know more about that person. Next slide. <coughs> Oh, this is a case study. So we, you have to just read it, okay? Uh, and uh, we'll be having a discussion about this. And you can tell me whatever we can do or we can, uh, what we have to uh, collect from it or what are the information you can gather from it. You can tell me, you can just put it in the chat box. A 56 year old lady, Mrs. A, has been diagnosed with CA breast in 2016. She had undergone mastectomy, that means breast removal surgery, referred for pain management. She looked very anxious and had no idea about palliative care at first. Uh, comorbidities were there like diabetes since 12 years, coronary artery disease, fracture on leg due to fall in 2019. She's a widow and her children are having a hostile relationship with her, lives alone in their rented house. So this is a case of a person, uh, we can just simply call her as Miss A, Mrs. A. So this is her story, or this is her case story. So you can just go through it and you can just, we can, we'll be having a discussion for this in the later session. Uh, have you gone through, gone through this, everyone? Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, from that thing, how an assessment is made is given. Here. The first thing will be the patient overview. The patient is a 56 year old lady. She's having breast cancer. And also we can gather the information. A patient overview will be collected. And the second one will be insight. So we'll be discussing this in uh, very uh, vastly um, in the current, um, in coming uh, sessions, like uh, in the coming sessions, okay? So second one will be insight about the illness. Third one will be the family overview. The fourth one will be socioeconomic overview. Fifth one is psychological overview. And the last one will be spiritual overview. With collecting all these information, we will be going to interventions and plans. Uh, Vaishnav, can we get the previous uh, one? Yeah, thank you. So here you can just relate those terms in this case study.
like what we have gone through is like um, patient overview was there. So you can just relate it here. 56 year old lady, Mrs. A, diagnosed with CFS. And she had undergone a mastectomy, referred for pain management. That will be patient overview. Then uh, there are comorbidities. comorbidities. That, is, that comes under uh, patient overview also. Then there is insight. Uh, I'll tell you about more in uh, next one. Insight about the illness. Then the third one will be family overview. You can know here, uh, she's a widow and her children are having a relationship. She lives alone in a rented house. The uh, rented house and her uh, life circumstances will be coming under socioeconomic overview. Then next one will be psychological overview. She'll be having, she's very anxious and had no idea about palliative care and uh, she's having problems since 2016. So there will be psychosocial issue, issues. So we have to take psychological overview too. Then last one will be uh, spiritual overview. This one is very uh, complicated one. We have to uh, assess very thoroughly before uh, coming to a and uh, before coming to an end. Uh, we have to take more sessions for the spiritual overview. Vaishno, next one. Next. So in the first one, patient overview. These are the four things we come across. The name, the age, gender, diagnosis. So these details come under patient overview. In our case study, uh, like Miss A, age of 56, she's a female, gender. Yes. Okay, uh, then there will be diagnosed CA breast with pets. Next one will be insert. So this one is an important one, like uh, if the patient is having any awareness about the illness. In some cases, uh, the patient will be, uh, will not having any idea about the illness. They'll be like, there's only a pain in my chest. So I don't know the exact term of the medical terms or anything. So there's only a pain. So at that situation, we have to be very careful. Like we don't have to uh, reveal that with proper sessions only, we have to reveal it. Otherwise they won't be able to uh, and just with the terms and everything. So insight is very important thing. And uh, they'll be not having, means they don't have any idea about palliative care. What is palliative care and how we can improve their quality of life. These things they don't know. So we have to uh, inform them what is palliative care and everything. Then if needed, if needed only we can explain. So, so this is what insight is. I think you all got an idea about patient overview and insight. So then next one will be, uh, Vaishnav, next slide. Family overview. In family overview, uh, the first one will be primary caregiver. When you consider a person, there will be a primary caregiver for him or her. In this case, uh, can anyone suggest like, uh, who is the primary caregiver? Anyone? Uh, can I ask someone from this list? Um, uh, Jomi, sorry, uh, I couldn't hear you properly. Okay. Um, uh, Leishram, um, can you just tell me who is the primary caregiver? It's not a, a questioning session or something. I'm just asking. Uh, I know. think primary caregiver is uh, the hospital who is treating her because oh. hmm. family relations are not good. Yes, thank you. thank you. Yeah. That's a correct one. Like uh, in, in this case, in this particular case, there is no primary caregiver actually. So uh, what we have to mention is like, if there is any relative, we have to find it. 
if there is any relative or any person who is very related to him or her, uh, we have to find them and we have to just inform them what is exactly going through them. They are living alone in their uh, rented house. So we have to find out and primary a primary caregiver. Because if anything happens to uh, her, we have to inform them. We have to just um, uh, take uh, um, the uh, consent from them. So there are so much things related to the patient too. So a primary caregiver is needed. In, in some cases, there will be no primary caregivers. Uh, we will be uh, taking the responsibility uh, for them in the medical uh, areas too. Okay. So the second uh, uh, point will be support system. When you consider the case study, there is no proper support system for her. Um, she's living alone and uh, she's having a hostile relationship with her children. And third one will be structure of the family. What is the exact structure? She's a widow and she's having children. So that is the structure of the family. Then nature of relationship. So hostile relationship is there. So there is no proper relationship with the family members. Then genogram. Uh, genogram is uh, basically we call it as a family tree. Okay. So this is family overview. Uh, we will come to uh, like uh, what is genogram, nature of relationship, and structure of family and support system in the coming slides. Next slide. Okay, this is a basic genogram. And with, uh, with this genogram, we can have an idea about uh, the nature of relationship. Um, thank you. Okay, so you can uh, see here, like the one in the center that is denoted by a circle and uh, shaded lines is Mrs. A the person who's suffering from the illness. So she's married to Mr. A, who's denoted by a small square, and it's been marked with a cross. The cross means that person is no more. So she's living alone. That is why that circle around Mrs. A. Okay, Mrs. A is having uh, two children, Mr. C and Miss D. Both are married and both are living in their respective homes. Mrs. A is not only the child, she's having a brother too, Mr. B, who's also passed away. And Mrs. A's parents too passed away. So now she's living alone. So that's why there is a small circle around Ms. A. So this is a basic genogram. And here you can see a small red lines. What exactly that red line means? We'll come into that in the next slide. Vaishnav, next slide. Okay, here you can see it properly. Those lines denotes uh, if it is a black straight line, it means plain or normal relationship. If it is a green line, it is intimacy or very close. If it is very, uh, there is a friendship or cross friendship is there, and you can just uh, denote it with uh, dotted green lines. Then hostile or conflictual relationship is there. Uh, previous slide, please, uh, Vaishnav. Um, previous slide, Vaishnav. Yeah, thank you. So here you can see uh, Mrs. A is having a uh, hostile or conflictual relationship, both the children. That is why it is denoted by small dotted red lines. Okay. So there is also a red line between Mrs. B and Mrs. A. That means there is no proper communication with them. Okay, next slide, Vaishnav. 
Okay. Here you can see uh, zigzag lines are there. Uh, so uh, that means uh, violence. And next is uh, blue lines, zigzag, zigzag lines. It's emotional abuse. And uh, if it is uh, dual lines, then it will be sexual abuse. If there is an neglect or abuse uh, happened uh, here, you can just mention it with dotted blue lines. And the arrow means that uh, for whichever person the neglect is happened, you can just mention it. Okay. If you have any uh, doubts, you can just um, put it in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Uh, next slide. Next one will be EcoMap. EcoMap is uh, depicted by Anne Hartman. Uh, it is a pictorial representation. It helps us to visualize social and personal relationship of individuals with the environment and with the larger society. Um, these are all uh, just um, just meaningful words, but you will know very uh, deeply by the next slide. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Yes, here. Excuse me. Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, this this uh, Sharad, there's one uh, question from uh, uh, Abhijit Mandal. He is asked whether genogram and family tree same or not. So before yes. you go to the next, I thought you can answer this. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Geno ma genogram and family tree same or not? Um, genogram and family tree uh, are both the same uh, in uh, different uh, scenarios. Like in a European and Indian culture, we just uh, give them different names. Like family tree and genogram. Uh, uh, this Vatsha yes, uh, 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 has asked whether the last line, please explain again. Which last line, Varsha, please can you specify? Last line of what? Which one? Varsha, you can just unmute and ask. Yes, Varsha. Geogram. Geogram, so you explained just now, no? That last, yeah, last line. Yeah. The dot. Yeah. That arrow, arrow you had shown. Okay, okay. I didn't the picture, it. the picture uh, okay, slide. Okay. Exactly. That, that's, sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Okay, uh, Vaishnu, can we go to the, uh, go back to the previous slide? Uh, next one, previous one. Okay. Uh, in the last one, there is a uh, daughter lines. Means neglect. Neglect happened in the family. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, sure. Ma Okay, uh, Vaishnu, can we go to the next one? Yeah, okay, thank you. So here, you can just see here, in the center, there is a family unit. This family is surrounded by so many uh, large societal factors. So these are all, these all are related with the family. This all makes the family complete. Like we can't, we can't live in a society where um, uh, we didn't get any kind of help or any kind of support from any other sources. We have to get help from any other, any sources too. So firstly, this family, when we consider this family, at the start, we get, we get support from neighbors. Then we get support or um, we are surrounded by like workplace, government services, community services, religious institution, friends, clubs, school, volunteers, and health service. Uh, Vaishnav, uh, previous slide. So this echo map is a snapshot view of important interactions of patient family with other systems. That means groups, extended family, individuals, organization, association, etc. So echo map helps us to find how they all are related with this family. So I'll give you a proper example. In the next slide. Uh, Vaishnu, next slide. Yeah. Here, when we consider Mrs. A, this is her eco map. She gets support from public health center. The support she gets from public health center. That's why the arrow is uh, formed towards Mrs. A. Okay. Then she gets support from church. She gets good support from palliative care. She's having a neutral relationship, means support from panchayat. But in the case of neighbors, there is not such a thing. There are only dotted lines. Means there is a help 
getting from them but it's not in a fully way like um, in public health center church palliative care and all there is a proper line so that means she gets help or support but in the case of neighbors there is not such a line that means the support is limited okay right. so shall we go to the next one okay social economic overview that is the fourth one with the help of social economic overview we can get an idea about uh, who is the breadwinner uh, in mrs a's case uh, there is no primary breadwinner i think like um, she is uh, staying alone and she is not having any kind of job or something so in some cases uh, in every cases when we compare our lives to there will be a breadwinner in a family so we can find out or uh, we can get um, an idea about what their family exactly con means contains of like uh, if who who is helping it or uh, who is the uh, exact member who is having a job or um, who helps them so that all things comes under breadwinners then other source of income if they are, they are having any kind of uh, other income like in kerala we will be having cattle also in every places we having uh, cattle cows and all then we will having some lands or cultivation or farming or anything or any other kind of sources of income then community support if they are getting uh, in the wiko map we also uh, uh, had a, a picture like organizational help uh, help from uh, public sectors like health care or palliative care or something we can also uh, write that down in the uh, community support sessions then uh, government schemes uh, in here like um, a disabled person always gets uh, pensions from government and uh, the caregiver too gets uh, pensions and uh, these all can be written down for future use also and ration card what is the ration card in uh, kerala we are having uh, three or four kinds of ration cards um, uh, according to the colors they differ like um, uh, there are white blue yellow and pink so these all are uh, related like um, their economic status uh, how they are in a society uh, if they having well balanced uh, social economic balance in the family then they will be given um, uh, a proper color of ration card uh, if they are very poor then they will be getting a uh, an yellow one if uh, their social economic status is above that then they'll be uh, given pink one then uh, the white and blue are there so a uh, ration card uh, collection of like um, getting the information about the ration card is also very helpful to assess their situation then debts if they are having any debts related to their um, treatments or uh, any loans or something are there so these are all uh, these all are comes under debts then other financial vulnerabilities like loans or something uh, these two are uh, interrelated debts and other financial vulnerability so social economic overview is this like debt winners other source of income community support government schemes ration card debts other financial vulnerabilities okay so next slide next one will be psychological overview uh the first one will be grief the second one will be depression and anxiety when we consider a person that person mrs a when we consider mrs a she will be having a kind of psychological problems because you can you can consider them uh, as a person like she is having a severe illness from 2016 and also related to that to she is having diabetes and other comorbidities like um, her leg is fractured in 2019 so there are so much kind of physical problems are there and related to that to uh, she doesn't get any kind of help from the family in the form of no, she living no. alone yes okay okay so um with all that problems too she doesn't have any support from their family members 
so there will be a alone a loneliness in her life it will become into a grief so why psycho psychological care important or overview is important it means um, you can just treat your physical illness but when you consider a psychological problems you have to treat it from the very start you have to eradicate it from the very beginning or we have to just um, thoroughly check it because small small problems leads to bigger ones they'll be having like anxiety depression related to their illness too so this is where uh, i want to give you a small example about this uh in the first uh in the very first start of the session i have told you about a uh, total pain a, a patient's story like uh he's having severe illness and all and uh, his pain is never ending so we given him uh, medications and all but he still says i have pain i have pain but after proper assessment we know about his exact pain that is related to his children so here the pain was psychological problems like the grief or thinking about their future so this is where psychological overview is very important so next will be spiritual overview uh this is um please thank you this is very uh, a vast subject like spiritual overview uh when we consider this we don't have to like i'm not a person very much uh, into like uh, talking about spiritual overview very vastly uh, like if we if we are going to talk about this we'll be have we'll need more sessions for this so i'll just give a small glimpse about spiritual overview first one will be meaning of life like when a problem happens into your into our life we'll think about my life has no meaning what will i do after this what is the purpose of existence for me i don't have any hope why me what uh, why it happened to me there will be a no in every situation because we are physically very ill we are not able to do whatever we have done in the past and we know that we, we can't do it in the future too so this will lead to like why this happened to me i haven't um, given anything like uh, i haven't just threatened or or just i don't i don't treat it anyone as very badly or i haven't done anything wrong to any other person then why it is happening to me that is a thing that is a thought that comes to your mind uh, after you will be uh, affected by uh, illness so like when you just you can just uh, relate with your life scenario like if you met with an small accident small accident just only a small accident uh, your leg is just got fractured then you will be thinking like i was just going in a very uh, safe manner i was using helmets and uh, i was not not very really over speeding and all of a sudden it all happened and now look at me i'm just lying on my bed and my leg is fractured all of a sudden we will think about like why it happened to me i was very cautious i wasn't her, uh, her i didn't hurt at anyone i wasn't rash driving but still it happened to me so for that small thing we think about we think in that situation like that when uh, an illness a life threatening illness comes into our, into our life we will be having these kind of thoughts very uh, very often and today also uh, i just want to share a small example with you uh, in today's uh, home visit 
I met with a person who is paraplegic, and um, he married a woman at the age of ninety. Because uh, at that age means the girl's age was ninety. After that, uh, they had two babies. Um, now, like they had a good uh, relationship or good life to ten years. It was a ten year relationship. All of a sudden, he just went to uh, buy something, and on the way, uh, he met with an accident, and he became paraplegic. And after one or one and a half year of treatment, he's now just uh, walking with uh, with the help of a tripod, like not a tripod, sorry, uh, with the help of a ramp. Uh, ramp is where uh, you can just have a small um, a steel plates uh, fitted in your um, in your room, and you can just with the help of that you can just walk. With only with the help of only that you can walk, and using um, a braces means in your legs, and he's just walking with that only, and all of a sudden he just uh, asked us like. Uh, sir, um, can you tell me how it means uh, if I'm able to walk? He said, don't worry, uh, with proper uh, physiotherapy and all, uh, it will improve. We know that uh, it won't be treated. But after one and a half year of treatment, he had a feeling like now I'm able to do this. So I'll be able to walk in one day. But all of a sudden, he just uh, vented out with emotions and he just cried in front of us. And he just had a, a words like, so I was very um, truthful to my wife. I was very caring uh, for my children. And I was really honest. And I haven't spent any of my money in liquor drinking or any kind of other substances. Then why it is why it happened to me? That was the first question uh, he asked with us uh, during that emotional elevation. So these questions arrive in our life too. When a problem arises in our um, life, we also have these kind of questions. So spiritual overview is a very uh, advanced one. We have to deal it with uh, proper uh, guidance only. Uh, I'm still studying on spiritual overview, like uh, how we can uh, just give them hope and all and how we can manage it. And I'm also studying um, that. So um, um, I think you got an idea about spiritual overview. Uh, so should I just go to the next one? Thank you. So now just let's discuss. What are the important areas to be assessed from the point of view of total pain? These all other things I just mentioned in the previous one, like uh, starting with patient overview, inside family overview, socioeconomic overview, and um, like psychological overview too. So what are the important areas to be assessed from the point of view of total pain? Can you suggest it? Anyone? Okay, uh, so you can put it in the chat box, okay? Um, Vaishnav, next one. So this. With the help of that case study, uh, we'll come to a point like, what is total pain? When we consider these four things, like physical, psychological, socioeconomic, and spiritual, 
these are the four areas which is the core of total pain in physical one the physical one the physical pain will be the extreme one then there will be fatigue lack of sleep difficulty in walking body image issue will be there and i, I want i want to just mention one more thing um, in the in today's visit uh, he was the uh, the person was asking me like i want to go out i want to go out but not like this i want to go out in my legs i want to walk how it will happen that was his question to us that was his wish to do so body image issue is a big problem but when you accept it then it will become like it will be a normal one but the accepting process is very complicated so this is where we not me we play a big role and then comes the psychological aspects like isolation emotionally weak anxiety about future anxiety about yeah, our future and our family's future unclear about the prognosis and palliative care uh, what do you mean by prognosis is, um, is what is the next step of medications is called as prognosis okay then distress due to multiple illnesses so these things are um, written here on the basis of mr mrs a's case study okay so then next will be socio economic here comes strained relationship with family unable to go for job due to the illness financial instability house rent issues low accessibility to hospital because you uh, just had that image in your mind like the stone paved path then absence of caregiver and support system so this all comes under socio economic then the last one is like spiritual extreme spiritual distress why all these sufferings lost faith in god loss of connection with family no significant person in life no memorable or joyful events in life so these all things can be sorted to an extent not fully to an extent with the help of proper psychosocial care so next slide vaishnav the next one will be possible social impact i will come to you uh, come to the uh, continuation of the previous slide in the coming slides okay so next one will be possible social impacts first one will be social isolation they will be having no contacts with others like uh, their house is situated uh, very alone uh, very standard and so due to that they will there will be no communication with others the person who are having any communication will be as the persons in palliative care or in health care profession so then dependency they will be very dependent to others uh, they have to depend on everything like if they want any uh, ration or anything if they want to buy something they have to depend on, depend on others then financial instability then lack of social support debts loss of work interpersonal issues inadequate facilities inadequate facilities are very common in these kind of situations and then interpersonal issues like they having problems with their children too so what we can do is here in the interpersonal issues we can just have a session with the children and we can just guide them what they have to do with their mother so this is where intervention starts okay 
uh, if you have not down it uh, then can we go to the next one okay yeah next one is like possible psychological impacts at the very starting time it will be the feeling of shock and uncertainty and hopelessness like uh, the impact of that illness becomes a great shock then uncertainty about the future then hopelessness what will happen next there will be no hope then anticipatory grief anticipatory grief is something uh, that's going to happen in the future and we are just grieving about it very early then there will be poor insight like what is the exact uh, disease and what is the exact prognosis like what medications should we take this kind of problems will be there so this will affect you psychologically anxiety then suicidal ideation or wanting to hasten death for coping with the illness psychological and spiritual suffering is real but very it's uh, but it can be difficult to recognize and treat and this can manifest as physical complaints you can relate to it with the first uh, person's example like uh, at first we uh, we just had like physical complaints were only there but after a proper interventions and um, study we found find out when they they are having psychosocial and spiritual problems excuse me sharad there's yeah. a question there's a question from elaine there okay. are so many issues where do we start she is asking so can you give an enlight on that ah, okay ma'am so there will be so much issues in the life of a person the starting point will be the physical problems so we have to treat them first like giving them medications at the first stage then we have to explore more about their psychosocial problems we have to address uh, we we can't address every uh, problems at once it is a step by step procedure so, so the first one will be physical one if physically the person is fit only then we can do help or we can just intervene in their life the second one will be psychological aspects then socio economic and then spiritual it will go like that okay thank you sharath yeah sure ma'am okay next one uh, um, will be like suicidal ideations or wanting to hasten death uh, i'll just give you a small example about it um a person who is uh, suffering from um, a disability like is having um, paraplegic and he is not able to uh, just do anything with his own hands because uh, from this part he is not uh, having any moving ability and he is having a problem related with uh, his uh, spinal cord injury and um, it happened at the age of 19 so that person or that boy is having suicidal ideations i'll be a uh, waste his own words are that i'll be a waste and i don't have a purpose to live here so i, I want to just commit suicide but i couldn't help because i don't have the ability to do so can you do that for me that was a question asked by one of our beneficiary but after intervening so much and is sorting out his problems now after 2 years he is now happy with his life and he is adjusted to his means he came across like he accepted the reality everyone has a purpose to live a purpose that we have to invite into their life so now he is uh, kind of having 
um, what is having uh, good thoughts about the future. Like, uh, okay, this happened to me. It's okay. So I can do many things in this position. It's with these limitations, I can do more. So that kind of attitude is needed to imbibe in them. So possible psycho psychological impacts are there. So we have to uh, do proper interventions to overcome it. Only with the help of a palliative care, only uh, we can do that. So uh, I think you got an idea about uh, psychological impacts, possible psychological impacts. Okay, uh, so sh should I go to the next one? Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me, Sharad, there's a question again yeah. in the chat box. Okay. Let me, let me read. You want me to read it? Yeah. It yeah. is, okay, one second. Impacts on a person under palliative care. Can uh, counseling be given to them by anyone who had undergone palliative training or only professionals like psychologists and social workers? Am I, did I read the full question? No, one second. Uh -huh. Is that the question? Uh, Is should, this the, okay. Yeah, okay. Should I answer it? Yeah, please. If you can now, then. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, the question is very, uh, very uh, good one, actually. Um, so what is the problem exactly? It means, uh, in the question also, uh, we all have doubts about how we can give counseling to a person who's who is suffering from uh, that kind of illness. Uh, what is the problem is, we can just give uh, proper guidance to other persons, but we don't have the exact knowledge. Like I'm just telling you, like uh, considering everyone, I'm a social officer. Uh, I have uh, I have completed MSW and I have gone through uh, psychological aspects and um, and through the counseling sessions too and the courses too. So if I am able to uh, give a counseling session, yes, I am. But I have also limitations because I don't have so much experience. You can give guidance. You can give guidance to anyone, no problem. But there is a limited experience we have. This is where a professional and a, and a normal person differs from. When you're giving a counseling to a person who's suffering from illness, in some stages, you won't be able to handle it properly. At that stages, there will be, they will be, the, the person will be like, uh, I was hoping more from you. I want more um, information from you. Uh, I haven't expected these kind of uh, dialogues from you. These kind of situations arises uh, during our counseling. So it is better for a person uh, to give counseling who is only, who is a professional or have completed counseling sessions or counseling courses. So that's my suggestion. Um, and uh, it will be good. It will be good uh, to uh, give them proper guidance uh, with more professional approach. Because uh, small words from ourselves, our sides will lead to uh, huge impacts on their life. Yeah, Shandi, ma'am. Uh, yeah, please. thank you, Sharad. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next one will be like vulnerable populations. Vulnerable population uh, is uh, is very increasing day by day. Uh, those who are living alone, those who are having elderly, those who are elderly without support, uh, single parents, multiple patients in family, like. Um, uh, we have so much families, uh, like they're having the same kind of psychological problems, like mother, the both children are having psychological problems. So multiple patients in a family, um, they are very vulnerable too. Then victims of gender issues like domestic violence, physical, verbal, psychological or sexual harassment, 
then individuals with mental health issues, individuals with suicidal ideations, socially isolated persons, substance users in family, uh, individuals in extreme poverty, lack of food, water, shelter, etc. So these all people comes under vulnerable populations. You can just relate it with your surroundings too. Like uh, if you um, find a person in your surrounding, like he's, he comes under these any of these points, then he's a vulnerable person. Okay, so vulnerable populations need uh, more care and um, uh, more help from our side too. Because uh, a person is having a family or good support, uh, often, uh, very often doesn't need uh, any kind of help from uh, us. But these, were, these populations need extreme care and support from our side. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, the next slide will be caregiver. So, uh, this is a word by Rosalind Tata. You can just read it. It's a very meaningful one. You can just relate it with your life too. There are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, and those who will be caregivers. And the last one is those who will need a caregiver. Like everyone, our life is a changing one. At the first time, we have just um, be with someone uh, who needed care. And uh, then now we are just taking care of someone. And it will be like we are now caregivers. At a point of in our life, we need caregivers too. So that is what depicted in this beautiful words by Rosalind Carter. So respect those individuals and acknowledge their complex role. Uh, sometimes uh, when you just visit a home, um, there will be caregivers. Like uh, if the mother is having some problems, um, so uh, the daughter or the son is taking care of him or, her, him or her. So at the very first visit, the persons, like the caregivers will be not very um, free to talk. They'll be having their own problems and they'll be just taking care of them too. And at the first time, at uh, the first glance, uh, we will be prejudiced like, look at him. What a person he is. He's just taking care of her like this. It's not proper. But we haven't came across what is his or her life circumstances. They'll be having complex roles in the life. They, um, that person, the caregiver will be a father of two children or the caregiver will be uh, the breadwinner of the family. He'll be having so much psychological problems too. So never uh, ever just um, didn't get acknowledged uh, their complex role in the life of uh, that person. And also never dehumanize them by calling them calling bystander. They are caregivers. They are giving care uh, without having any remuneration. So uh, this is a, a very important term in palliative care, caregiver. It's an important word. So next slide. So this is a small picture. Um, you can relate with uh, everyone's life. Uh, we have taken the consent of the patients uh, and the caregiver. Uh, that's why we shared it. It's like uh, he was in the hospital for a very long time. And his wish was to uh, just celebrate their anniversary, wedding anniversary. So, um, it was the day before their wedding anniversary because at that day uh, they were going to their home. So we wouldn't be able to just hold them at uh, our premises. So we just uh, give them a small cake uh, for their celebration. And it's, it was written advanced wedding anniversary. 
and they were like literally you can see the uh, faces of them like the happiness so these are all the small things we can do to them and those will make some wonders in their life okay, this was an unexpected one and these kind of things should make some difference okay next slide next one will be uh, after all this like uh, we can uh, come across assessment started with assessment and we included so many things like uh, psychological aspects uh, social economic problems uh, spiritual problems um, and psychological everything and i have mentioned one thing in the first uh, first slides like uh, purposeful observations leads to purposeful interventions yeah you can see in the first window at ahila mathobi i to those children who came from school okay you good okay uh, so at the first time uh, i have told you about this and uh, interventions leads uh, with proper uh, sorry uh, with the proper uh, interventions sorry with proper assessments only we can um, get into proper interventions for proper interventions uh, like providing information licensing facilitation rehabilitation brimen support follow up supportive counseling psychoeducation will be happened okay with proper interventions only uh, i'll just start with the first one like interventions with proper providing of information will be given like uh, we can just give them proper support uh, with proper uh, purposeful observations only we can do that liaisoning is just um, relating them with the sources uh, if they need any help of uh, from the government or any other sectors uh, we can be a, a a medium of contact between them so then facilitation of that resources it's happened with proper interventions then rehabilitation has happened through this and bereavement support uh, if anything any uh, uh, problems happened in their life then uh, after the uh, demise of that person we can give them proper bereavement support uh, for coping up with the emotions and all then follow ups are needed follow ups are very important because with only proper follow ups we can know about their current problems and all then only we can just intervene into that okay then supportive counseling if there is any supportive counseling is needed uh, as uh, you asked in the previous ones like um, how we can give counseling uh, with the help of professionals we can give supportive counseling then psycho education <laughs> psychological education can be given as a part of interventions uh vishnu next one okay here uh, these are some examples that what we do in palim india uh this is our uh, one step uh, towards the reality of life its first one will be vocational rehabilitation here you can see uh, the first one is uh, the goat rearing project um they have given uh, with the proper assessment uh, at first they will be get registered second one will be like uh, the social officers will uh, um, do a proper home visit and assess the situations and everything then after uh, the authorization from uh, our a beloved uh, sirs and madams only we just get into the next phase like uh, how we can help them how uh, we have we can improve their uh, socio economic status and uh, this is where vocational rehab um, plays a huge role like in the first one go trading and the second one is uh, candle making and third one will be uh, the tailor shop or uh, just giving a sewing machine to the concerned person to just um, do their works and uh, earn from that and the fourth one will be uh, the making of ambala and we also have so many projects like um um juice making 
um, then we have uh, jewelry making and then cattle uh, cattle farming um, and so many kind of uh, projects are there so these all comes under vocational rehabilitation this is a sustainable project like uh, it doesn't mean that it is just started for one time and it will end in uh, in few months it is, it is a continuing process and it will improve their economic stability and they can just um, uh, find their own income from this. Okay, so this is one vocational rehabilitation. And second uh, is, uh, next slide, support for children, educational or emotional. Uh, here, what we do is um, we just assess all the um, aspects of their family like in the case uh, of uh, in the first one also they're having children but they are very elder so in these cases uh, the children will be uh, very young and there will be no source of income for the family and at the start of the school sessions means uh, when the school starts we'll be having like um, a proper form for filling uh, from the institution and all, then uh, we'll be just verifying it with the school. And after that, uh, we will be providing educational support for them. And this one you see here is an emotional one, emotional supporting system. Like uh, we provide, uh, yes, Shanti ma'am. Yeah, there's a question from Elaine. Yes, uh, yes. I think I, I thought I'll get back to that. So I didn't want to disturb you in between. Yeah. So after, when, after you finish, then please look it up. That's what a psychoeducation she has asked. So after you finish this, maybe you can. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sure. Oh, okay, uh, here you can see, uh, it is a program we conducted in our Palim India. Uh, you can see uh, the chairs are arranged here. It was this room uh, where we conducted a small program for them, uh, for them to uh, just um, give them proper, uh, and entertainment for them uh, just to motivate them uh, to uh, get more success in their life. So these kind of programs are arranged in Palium India. Okay, so these kind of supports are given by us. Um, next one, Vaishna. Yeah, always remember. Okay, before that, I just want to um, uh, give a proper um, answer to the question that have been asked psychoeducation. Psychoeducation means psychological education for them. With proper interventions only, we can give them uh, psychological education. Uh, if uh, they're having uh, psychological distress, anxiety or anything, with the help of professionals like social officers or uh, psychologists, uh, we give them uh, psychological education. So that is what uh, mentioned in the session, like interventions, psychological education. So that's only uh, written like psychoeducation. That means psychological education. Okay. If you have anything more uh, doubt about that portion, you can just ask me. No problem. Uh, is it okay, Shantima? Yeah, I think so. So yeah. you have to psychological support where they, where it is where it is uh, wherever it is necessary. Yes, right? ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think it should be okay, Elaine. If, it, if not, please put it in the chat box. Yeah, sure. Okay, so always remember these things. Evaluate our interventions very properly because small mistakes uh, will lead to uh, more complicated problems. So evaluate our interventions first, then assess how the patients and families are benefited. Because once we help them, we don't know what exactly happens to them. Uh, if you just... Uh, just um, just acknowledge all the problems and we just give them uh, two or three uh, gods. Okay. After that, we just don't know what happens to them. Uh, if they are in a very uh, poor economic status, then they will be just, uh, they'll buy it from us and they will just sell it to any other person for, for the sake of that situation. So we have to be very careful with it. So we have to assess the patients and families um, like uh, if they are using it still now or if they are continuing it so we have to assess it properly and also next one assessments have to be revised and updated because uh, if the problem is uh, right now we are having a problem yeah it, it is sorted 
but on the next stage we'll be having a different problem so in the next one there will be a different so the problems are there but the uh, kind of problems that comes into our life changes according to our life circumstances so for that assessments have to be revised and updated uh, if a new person comes to our organization uh, if the if uh, i'm not able to update that in now uh, systems then the new joinee will not be able to continue what i started so that is where we have to be uh, we have to update everything then reach out for help if needed if they need any help we just have to reach out for them then there is an art and science in psychological care just as in medicine in medicine we have so much kind of things like um kind of medications are there um so like that there is an art and science in psychological care too. um it doesn't mean that medical science is different and psychological science is different uh both are interrelated and we have to take care of both the realms so that's an important thing so these things you have to remember very carefully next slide so we are just coming to the end of the session and this is a word by mahatma gandhi um like the difference between what you do and what you are capable of doing will solve most of the world's problems so uh we have to be the change makers uh whatever comes uh we have to do it uh from ourselves if the problem is there if any problem is there we have to start it from ourselves so we have to change ourselves first and we have to study what is palliative care what are psychological aspects and what are what are uh, what are the problems we have to just um, take care into these two things have to be uh, imbibed into ourselves first then only we can just go right into the society and give help so first thing is um, we have to understand what is palliative care and what is the need of palliative care so improving the quality of life and bringing happiness across every phases that we see is not a uh, it's not very achievable but we but if we achieve it um then the then it is very precious too so um i hope you all are fine in your home and this session or this discussion uh, was very helpful i think if not just uh, tell me no problem i will just improvise okay uh, if you have any doubt doubts or anything you can just put it in the chat box um thank you so much for just okay sharad sure, this uh, one question from varsha is it possible to show the uh, intake form or show or share the intake form she uh, wants to know intake form uh, yeah. what kind of intake form like registration form like what varsha can you explain or extend and which was that yeah registration or you mean the registration form registration okay. initially when patients come so about the so you yeah. take a interview then no, that intake okay ma'am uh, uh, patient now... registration <laughs> okay okay ma'am uh, varsha ma'am uh, what actually we do is at the first stage uh, we just have a, a registration sheet it is uh, having uh, it is used for collecting the information basic information will be there will be the first one like name gender age and all the things then there will be yes yes but uh, what is the problem right here is uh, we don't have the exact format in a pdf format uh, in our system right now in my system right now because it's very confidential uh, and uh, if you want it then i'll just ask with the uh, concerned persons then only i can reveal it um, because um we will be asking uh, so much uh, questions to them like there will be first part will be the basic details then the second part will be the health conditions then the next will be uh, uh, done by uh, us as like social workers or social officers like uh, psychosocial problems uh, the socio economic problems then we will come uh, at the last we will be having a intervention uh, pages 
so planning pages so in that we have to a social officer uh, writes down what are the plans needed to um, do uh, for improving their life so uh, this will be a basic format for the registration after the completion of registration only uh, we'll just uh, go into the next phase like interventions only okay uh, Okay. Um, this Manika, Dr. Manika, is, she has some questions. Dr. Manika. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Uh, thank you. This was such an informative session. Uh, I just want to uh, ask something like uh, uh, when we deal with the patient, when we are at the step of assessing them, there's a lot of information the patient is not able to give at the first instance. Yes, yes. The first day when we assess the patient, uh, the patient usually hides. So one of the uh, pictorial depiction that you were showing for the uh, the linkage, the arrow marks. Yes, so yes. we have sexual abuse, we have uh, domestic violence. Mm. So sometimes the patient is not uh, good enough to speak maybe because of their mental image maybe because of their uh, social image and a lot of the factors that are running in their mind because this is one of the things that matters to a patient with regards to his privacy so yes. it's very difficult sometimes we uh, since we when we assess the patient first time they never tell those things so yes. how how we should deal with these cases because first day assessment is very important like the patient discusses the things at the later stages when we are at a week it's a week intervention or when we are treating the patient by third week or fourth week then they'll come up with the things they'll say this happened in a family i was a, a victim of a sexual violence i had been a victim of a domestic violence so they come up with the things but at a later stage why they are not presentable at the initial assessment since uh, according to me what i feel the initial assessment is very important Yes, and sir. the first day assessment that we are taking. So how we should deal with it, how we should uh, create a rapport with the patient. Uh, it's it's but obvious that the first day the patient will not get a good rapport with us. It will take some time. Uh, so these are the certain issues the patient might not open, uh, maybe during the entire session or maybe till they are under the treatment with us or somewhere else. So what what things we should do in regards to this? Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Manika, thank you for asking the question. And you have just answered the, um, like, you have told me the answer with your conversation, like, here, right now. Because uh, what I felt is uh, initial assessments are done in the first stages. So at the first, at the very first, they are not very open. Okay. Uh, what I mentioned in the genogram also, uh, it is a genogram that was written, means that was. Um, just, uh, just drawn after uh, uh, what kind of three or four sessions after that sessions only. Uh, at the first one, there will be like uh, the the patient, the daughters, uh, and their family only. We don't have we don't know about uh, the exact conflicts and anything about them. But after getting more rapport with them, we only know about more about them. Then only we can just do uh, more things to them or uh, what are the interventions we should take. These all kind of things uh, will be made possible after three or four sessions only. So the answer lies within your question. Uh, so, so actually, uh, thank you for the answer, uh, Manika. And I think uh, you all get a know uh, knowledge about that to everyone. And anything I want to add, um, if you want me to add anything more, Manika, Dr. Manika. Uh, yes, sir. No, thank you, sir. Uh, I have one uh, case to discuss. It's just a small case. Recently, uh, like uh, there was a patient to me. She suffered hemiparesis. Uh, plus, she was having facial palsy. And the first day assessment, when I asked her, uh, because she was so grief stuck, and I don't know what was the reason behind her grief. So... Uh, she was not able to talk to me. She was not able to attend to my words. She was not attentive. And But when I appointed an internee, so she was comfortable with the internee instead of answering my questions. So I just asked her husband, what is the reason for uh, that she is so uh, grief stuck? And so he just told that uh, she recently had a failed IVF. 
so the girl is 26 years old and they had undergone an ivf which was a failure for them so that thing was just uh, sticking to the patient's grief but still she didn't discuss anything with me it was her husband who was a source of information to me uh, she was not telling anything not attentive to my questions not attentive to my assessment but at, on the basis of treatment she was comfortable with the internee that i appointed and later on when she found the progress in her physical impairments and then she improved then she talked to me then she was uh, happy to see the uh, improvements that she had attending the sessions so but initial days it was very hard for us to talk to her but not to the teachers not to the doctors but to the internee maybe because of the same age and uh, i don't know what was the reason but their main problem was something personal because they both had and failed ivf uh, recently okay uh, dr manik actually thank you for that information uh, it, from my point of view i think like uh, the internee that you appointed there um, the main attractiveness of that is the age same age okay and also uh, when you consider an internee and a doctor the internee will be more approachable like uh, she will be not having any kind of uh, knowledge about everything and you are a doctor and you will be having like you have proper information from your side so the at first the person will be thinking like yeah uh, the doctor will be having so much reasons and so and so for my problems but the internee will definitely feel what i feel so that's a kind of uh, thing that comes uh, for the patient and also uh, with proper i think the source of income, uh, so sorry so the source of information from uh, her husband is very vital yeah and also um, you told me like uh, after so much sessions and uh, treatments she is very com- comfortable with you yeah so they, really- she was happy she was even happy to see the results her uh, facial paralysis improved she had good strength in her upper limb lower limb she was doing well with the sessions yeah that that's very actually very great and um, that's what we have to make like the approachable uh, patterns differ from each person uh, like uh, if i'm going to a doctor i will not tell every details but in the case of a nurse when i see a nurse uh, if we get um, more uh, talkative like then she is very approachable like i can share everything no problem because uh, she doesn't talk too much like medical terms and everything she just talk to me like uh, she only know how is some less knowledge about that so uh, that's a problem there uh, i found that is the problem in this scenario um, sometimes those internees can help sometimes you also can be like in in parliament also uh, have you ever seen like uh the chairman of the uh, of our palim india dr raj he just at the first visit he just goes to the patient and uh, just pats his uh, the person's shoulder at that very moment they will be like okay she is very he is very approachable okay i can share anything with him but in some cases we are not able to do that like uh, there will be so much um, physical barriers will be there or the time constraints will be there but after each sessions it will improve okay thank you dr manika congratulations you have been very successful in that case though you felt that it were not you were upset about that you handled it so well i think because you understood the need of an internee and uh, the intervention properly you gave which ultimately led to the success which is what you everyone needs right so congratulations so let me thank i think we are running out of time or reaching almost time so thank you sharath for enlightening everyone every aspect each and every aspect like physical socio economic phys- psychological and spiritual interventions in a person's life and i'm sure everybody enjoyed and everybody had uh, put in their comments in the chat box also congratulations and thank you so much and see you all tomorrow sharp 5 take take care all of you over to you raji you have the the form to fill in uh yes uh, so thank you sharath for that wonderful session thank you shanti aunty for effectively facilitating the session and uh, no words to all the participants to making it more interactive
Uh, so if you still have any questions, you can definitely write to us. We can connect you with uh, Sharath or any other person uh, who is like uh, a specialist in uh, counseling and all. So we can definitely get you help from our end. So thank you once again for joining us. Thank you, Sharath, for, for being there till the end. Uh, we are sharing the feedback link. We share the feedback link, so you can do the feedback. We'll see you tomorrow, same time with another topic. Till then, goodbye, take care.